Uh, let me uh, let's start today with a little bit of the week ahead. Uh, tomorrow, the president will uh, deliver the commencement address uh, at the United States Military Academy uh, at West Point in West Point, New York. Uh, obviously, laud the graduates for uh, their accomplishments, uh, their service to the country, discuss the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, and outline some broad principles that will be in the president's national security strategy released uh, later next week. On Sunday, the president has no public events scheduled. On Monday, the president will visit with Prime Minister Harari of Lebanon at the White House. This will be the prime minister's first official visit to Washington during his premiership, and the president looks forward to consulting with the prime, Min with prime, with the prime minister on a broad range of mutual goals in support of Leb Lebanon's sovereignty and independence, regional peace and security. Also on Monday, the President will host a reception to celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. On Tuesday, as part of National Small Business Week, the President will host award-winning small business owners from around, the from around the country for an event at the White House where he will discuss the important role that small businesses play in our economy. Also on Tuesday, President Obama uh, will welcome President Napolitano of Italy to the White House. Uh, the United States and Italy, a leading NATO ally, uh, have strong bilateral relations. The President appreciates Italy's robust contributions to peace efforts around the world and looks forward to continuing his consultations with the President following up on their July 8 meeting from last year in Rome. Later on Tuesday, the President will travel to San Francisco, California to headline events on behalf of Senator Barbara Boxer uh, and the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. On Wednesday, the President will visit, Solind uh, will visit the Solyndra Incorporated Solar fa Facility, excuse me, in Fremont, California, where he will tour their 300,000 square foot uh, high-tech facilities and make remarks uh, to workers on jobs in the economy. Uh, following his remarks, the President will return uh, to Washington, D.C. On Thursday, President Obama will, this is hard for an NC State graduate to say, welcome the NCAA men's basketball champion Duke Blue Devils uh, to the White House. Um, Reggie will be in um, rare form uh, to honor their uh, 2009 and 2010 season. President and First Lady will also host uh, a first ever White House reception in honor of Jewish American Heritage Month. Uh, and we will have more details uh, on uh, Friday through the weekend uh, later on. Ms. Lovett? Um, yeah, a couple of things. The, um, the Lebanon and Italy leader events remind me if uh, we could ask you to have food sprays with questions. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't have, uh, no, don't, I don't know what the coverage is. So you're I'll not telling me about those specifically, but it's more of a broad question that um, we'd like to have pool sprays, including questions for most of these events, which yeah. we do not usually have. I'll, I'll check on what the coverage is, to, to be honest with you. Some of that's going to be very schedule dependent. I'm, a, I'm asking for it not to be schedule dependent, but to become more of a tradition <laughs> like it used to be. No, I understand. Has. I, I, I w w you and I should go see the scheduler. That's uh, <laughs> well, I they, uh, meeting. What, I mean, do you have to like? <laughs> it's an extra five minutes. Yeah, we're it's not really five a minutes. schedule yeah. issue. Yeah. I'm happy to talk about this offline. There, there. I've yet to be in one of these that lasts five minutes. But uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think I've been in one of those either. But I, I appreciate it. So on BP, um, the president referred to it today as a disaster, a disaster in the Gulf. And I'm wondering if, um, or, or I guess if you can explain why the federal government isn't treating it like it would treat a normal disaster, where you sort of come in and take charge. I know you have the expertise at BP's no, no, level no, no. and the other companies, but why isn't the federal government sort of taking over yeah, this operation? I, I, I think we've gone through this question. We, uh, we went through this question yesterday. The Oil Pollution Act of 1990, uh, uh, for reasons that were obvious in 1990, uh, put the liability and the responsibility for recovery and cleanup with the company rather than with the taxpayers. No, That's I'm why. Asking a financial question. No, 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 I'm asking no, no, a management it, question. No, no, but it, the management question is a financial question. I understand because uh, they're responsible for the cleanup and they have to pay for it. They, they're not two separate questions. Uh, so it and is. There's no legal way to sort of separate that out and say no, they, we they, send again, the, the federal Act. disaster experts. Well, let's experts. be clear. Uh, uh, I've tried to explain this uh, many times. Uh, they are responsible for, and we are overseeing that response. Uh, that includes, as I discussed yesterday, 
there are many different departments and agencies that are involved here. The Department of Interior and what used to be the Minerals Management Service is in charge of uh, regulation and drilling issues. <clears throat> uh, NOAA deals with um, a series of issues including water sampling, uh, detection of oil inside the water, uh, the Department of Homeland Security is where the Coast Guard is housed. Uh, the Coast Guard uh, obviously uh, was on the scene right after the original explosion. Uh, and Thad Allen, the uh, head of the Coast Guard, is the National Incident Coordinator. The Environmental Protection Agency does air and water quality testing. And once oil uh, hits land, uh, they have purview over that. I understand what you're saying, that you're legally not allowed to take sort of no, no, command no, I, control of the whole no, situation. No, again, we're, we're, Jennifer, we, they are responsible for and we are overseeing the recovery uh, response. I will add that SBA is also in the area dealing with uh, disasters for uh, fishermen because NOAA has closed 19 uh, percent of the Gulf for fishing uh, and SBA is there to provide low interest loans for people that have had economic damages as a result of, uh, of that disaster. But understand, Jennifer, as I've, I think I've also said on a number of occasions, um, the technical expertise to clean up and deal with the equipment that is 5,000 feet below the surface of the sea, that's equipment that BP has. That's the equipment that other oil companies have. That is not, uh, that is not based on equipment that the federal government uh, has in storage. I understand. I'll let this go because I'm using up my time. That's not really the question I was asking, is whether you're physically doing the work. I'm asking why you don't take control of the whole operation. Again, uh, I, I, maybe I'm just not being, over the course of several weeks, have been clear on this. Um, uh, it is their responsibility. They have the uh, legal responsibility and the technical expertise to plug the hole. Obviously, Secretary Chu, uh, Secretary Salazar, Secretary Napolitano, and others have been involved in efforts with other scientists, uh, both uh, government and non-governmental scientists, uh, in conjunction with uh, British Petroleum, which has been working in conjunction with other corporations and other oil companies. So I, I guess I'm, I'm happy to try to sift through the question. I just, um, they're, they're responsible and we are overseeing uh, to ensure that what they're doing is what needs to be done. But if they're not getting the job done, does the government just stand there as a spectator and, Chip, and hope for the best? Chip, th th there's nothing that would denote that the federal government has stood there and hoped for the best. I mean, I, I, the premise of your question uh, doesn't, doesn't match any single, hold on, let me finish this. Hold on, let me finish this. They, that doesn't match any single action that our government has undertaken since the call came in that this rig had exploded in the Gulf. So, uh, you know, the, the premise of your question doesn't fit any of the actions that are currently happening on behalf of the federal government in the Gulf of Mexico. But Robert, there's a whole problem here with BP in that every piece of information that no, they've delivered, with, yeah, every piece of information hasn't been has, has turned out not to be true when it comes to the amount of oil that's spilling, how many leaks there were, I mean, and every single, so it, you guys are having to rely on them, and I, I understand you're saying it's because they're legally guys. responsible. We, we are, the government has right. to rely on them for the technical yeah. expertise. I understand that, but do they have the credibility anymore? I mean, why not just say, you know what, we're going to, we're going to, we're running this thing. You guys aren't again, running this thing. Uh, again, we're running. Chuck, Chuck, we are overseeing the response, okay? I, I don't know what you think, uh, uh, we, we're working each and every day. That's why Secretary Chu, the Department of Energy, it, it sounds technical. The Department of Energy doesn't have purview over oil, oil drilling. That's not in their governmental sphere, but Secretary Chu has been down there working through a whole host of uh, ideas, including enhanced imaging to get a better look at a disaster that's 5,000 feet uh, underneath the water. I. I uh, uh, we have taken every step. We have pushed relentlessly for BP to do what is necessary uh, to contain what is leaking, to deal with both the environmental and the economic impacts of uh, what, as the President said today, is unquestionably a disaster. Uh, 
one of the questions you asked Jennifer was remember th this is not something there's there's not a dis you may have been con be confused about the notion of a disaster declaration uh, that well, I'm wondering if there's something analogous to that where you can just like the an oil AIG pollution act is what the oil pollution act of 1990 is what governs uh, how one responds to and who pays for a spill. You're legally not able to step in and take a actual control. You said no, so I, uh, I'm just confused. Again, I, I don't. I, I, I guess I'm confused. At what do you? What are you asking them? BP you, is not accomplishing the task. Like, why doesn't the federal government come in and take over and get so the job done? Can you federalize it? Can you just federalize the whole thing? <clears throat> no. Uh, what we're let me let me just also want to address Jake's question. We. Uh, BP is uh, is working, and I would refer you to BP on the actual efforts that they're undertaking and that will undertake uh, as a course of this weekend. Uh, different ideas on how to stop the leak both out of the pipe which they've done through the insertion tube as well as what's going on in the riser. Um, uh, I would say uh, relating to some of the earlier questioning we've asked them to provide uh, more public data on air and water quality and we asked them 10 days ago and reiterated in a letter yesterday to provide uh, video footage of what's happening 5,000 feet underneath the Why sea. Why you order them to do that rather than because ask them to do that? Because you can't do that from a private company. We, we the information, you first of all, the, the AIG pilot. what to do. Uh, pardon? You took over AIG. Well, we, we, <laughs> we, the company is largely in receivership. That's, there's, <laughs> there's a difference but, between. I mean, isn't there a way I, I to clear well, some let sort me just of get through. Let me get through Chip's question. Uh, Chip, that, that's proprietary video that was in the Joint Information Center and was working through uh, the, the command had the video uh, in order to see for the response efforts that we were doing on in conjunction with them, that video is now public. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask about Dennis Blair. Will James Clapper be replacing him either temporarily or permanently? And can you talk more about the process during which the president lost confidence in Mr. Well, Blair? let me discuss. Uh, first of all, uh, the the director will will resign, as he said, effective next Friday. Uh, the deputy director uh, at DNI will become the acting director. Uh, the president has uh, talked to uh, a number of. Um, well-qualified candidates uh, and we'll make an announcement on uh, who the next permanent DNI will be soon. Yes, uh, soon. That's yeah, as much of a time I, I'm you not going to get into names or timelines. Look, my guess is there is uh, probably no uh, no harder job in Washington besides being president than being uh, director of national intelligence. Uh, the coordination uh, across um, uh, many different intelligence agencies uh, is uh, and given the fact that this job was simply was just created uh, only a few years ago um, means that uh, director Blair had to uh, bring some some clarity to um, the challenges that the DNI has uh, he has done that the president uh, is thankful for his continued service to the country. Uh, the act that set this up, again, uh, what I mean by that is the act that set this up uh, put off some of the more difficult questions uh, legislatively uh, for the DNI to have to uh, go through. Um, Admiral Blair did that um, uh, in, in, again, working through questions like uh, budget authority, uh, working through questions um, like chase, uh, chief of station representation. Uh, so I think there are a number of things, obviously, that, uh, that Admiral Blair did. Um, there's no doubt that we continue to have as a result, and, and we saw this, uh, that the president identified uh, on, the, on the attempted Christmas Day bombing, that there's still coordination issues that we have to work through. The president simply believed that it was, uh, it was time to transition to a different uh, director of national intelligence. Uh, and we'll have an announcement on a permanent replacement soon. Okay, you, so you can talk more about 
what led to the decision? Well, there I, any I, again, I, I think uh, I, I think I outlined uh, basically where the president's thinking is on that. Yeah. The administration uh, won a court victory today uh, about Bagram, basically the government giving it, affirming that the Obama administration can pick up anywhere in the world except for the United States a non-citizen of the United States and hold them beyond the process of the court. And I'm wondering how that comports at all with uh, the language that President Obama yeah. used on the campaign trail when well, he was talking about Jake, I know the council was working on, uh, on a response to some of these points, and I'll get that uh, as soon as I get out of here. Yesterday you were asked about comments that uh, John Brennan made about trying to build up the more moderate elements of Hezbollah. I, I, I've, uh, I've asked John for that, but I haven't gotten anything back from him. Do you um, have, does the president have any uh, concerns at all about President Calderon criticizing American laws uh, at Congress or from the lawn of the White House? Some Republicans have objected. Yeah, I think Ann asked me that yesterday. Uh, and uh, uh, look, I, I know that President Calderon has strong feelings about, uh, uh, particularly about the Arizona law, on the belief that we should have strong, uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, the president shares uh, uh, the president shares his concern on both those aspects. So it's not inappropriate at all. Uh, I would point you to the Mexicans to see uh, if they think it's inappropriate. I think again, the, I, I simply think the president has uh, similar concerns with those laws. Thank you, Reverend. On BP, um, there is a, an official who said from BP who says that he expects that the, the leak will be plugged sometime next week, as early as next week. How much confidence does the White House have in, in that timeline that they well, can actually Well, again, look, they're, they're going to undergo, uh, and, and they can explain the uh, technical nature of this better, uh, the process of, uh, uh, of trying to clog this, uh, this leak with, uh, with heavy mud. Uh, injecting that into uh, the system, uh, I think, beginning sometime this weekend. Uh, I, I would point you to them in terms of the degree to which uh, they think that's going to be successful. We continue to work on with them ideas for uh, how to both plug and contain what is leaking, uh, even as BP uh, begins to drill a longer-term solution uh, through a relief well. But, but obviously they're telling you this is what we think will work. What is the confidence level from the White House? Well, Do you think they're going to be able to stop this? Uh, we're, we're certainly hopeful, yes. And then back to, back to Jennifer's question. I mean, if they can, does there come a point when the White House has to say, listen, we need to take charge of this, not just from yeah. an oversight point of view. Yeah, we're going to step the, in and the, we're going to bring in the whatever. National, the National Incident Coordinator and Thad Allen, uh, agencies throughout the government have been working on the ground uh, since uh, right after this explosion in the Gulf uh, to do all that we can um, to plug this leak, to contain what was leaking, to deal with what happens uh, in the event, and as we have seen, that that oil uh, gets to land. We now know some of that oil has begun to get into the loop current, and how do we deal with that? Sampling, uh, water quality sampling, uh, and how we deal with both uh, surface and subsea dispersants. So um, we have uh, we've been there uh, every day of this uh, of this crisis, and uh, we will stay there uh, until this hole is plugged, uh, until we deal with what is either in the water or on the surface, uh, and the impacts of that both environmentally and economically, which uh, will probably take quite some time. Uh, to sift through. But you will, but you will, well, you will, hang on a second, hang on. But you will still just be essentially assisting in any way possible as many times as they want to keep trying something that doesn't work. So you're not going to well, Dan, walk we're, in. We're, we're if, focused if on trying. Well, we'll wait and see and they'll try something else. No, no, this, uh, Dan, I, I, this, this notion that the government is simply waiting and seeing. Well, we, the, again, Dan, if you've got an idea of how to plug this hole, uh, I'm happy to put you in charge of it with with, with John Holdren here, with Secretary Chu, or somebody at the Joint Information Command. So everything no ideas then that the White House has, that this administration has. Everything that can has. be done is being done. That's why we have scientists here and throughout the administration that are working on trying to make that happen. Robert, questions about federal sure. lies and I have another Robert. question actually on something else. Um, but yeah, on, on the, after the uh, so-called underwear bombing, 
uh, the president talked about the failures in, I think you characterize it as uh, coordination issues. Uh, but he also talked about pushing for solutions to fix the problem. What is, what is the sense here in, in the White House about intelligence sharing and the analysis of intelligence? What, what How does the White House feel that the various agencies are sharing information or well, analyzing it? I would say that the, the president took uh, responsibility for uh, that lack of coordination and information sharing uh, on Christmas Day. Since then, has uh, it gotten any better? Uh, the improvements that were, uh, the problems that were identified and the improvements that uh, John Brennan and others have begun to uh, put into the system have improved it. We will, we, Dan, the, the president has asked every member of the intelligence community and the national security team to evaluate our processes every day to see if there's anything that can possibly be done better. That's what the intelligence community and the national security teams do uh, do each and every day. We will we uh, we strive to get it uh, uh, as good as it can be. Can I just follow yeah. up? I'd love to get at least initially a yes or no answer to this question. Is the president satisfied with BP's response? The president is is not satisfied that we've plugged a hole in the floor of the ocean that's leaking uh, barrel. Uh, uh, thousands of barrels of oil a day and polluting the Gulf of Mexico. Is the President satisfied with BP? Uh, we are continuing to push BP to do everything that they can. So, no yes or no on whether you're satisfied with BP? I, I, I thought Does I gave you a fairly Does full, he have full confidence answer. in BP. Uh, again, we are asking BP to do, uh, to take the steps that we believe are necessary. Chuck? I have another question. Um, the, uh, Go ahead. It, you, you sent out that tweet about it. It was 10 days between the time you first asked for the live video and when you got the video. May and on the other hand, it, which sounds you know like you're asking without any kind of uh, power behind it at all, and on the other hand, you say you've got your boot on their throat. That sounds like they're wearing the boot if they can just sure, get, go along for 10 uh, days. I mean, I mean, seriously, <laughs> Robert, there's this yeah. growing perception that the United States, that, that the government is somewhat powerless to make BP do what it wants them to do if it can't even get them to put a live feed of video up for 10 Chip, days. Chip, we, we, uh, we, have, we have pushed them to make things more public. Uh, there are laws that govern the proprietary information of companies. Uh, we can't change each and every one of those laws, Chip. Uh, we will uh, work every day to ensure that BP is doing everything that it can do, uh, everything that we believe it should do, uh, we asked again yesterday that they make uh, more transparent their air and water quality samples, that they update their website on that on a daily basis, that they provide live video footage of what is happening uh, on the floor of the ocean 5,000 feet beneath it. Um, uh, and we will continue to push uh, any company and the president and the team here will continue to push all elements of the government to get this right. We are facing a disaster, the magnitude of which uh, we likely have never seen before in terms of a blowout in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and we're doing everything humanly possible and technologically possible to deal with that. Very quickly Chuck, on financial regulation, yeah, would, you like, would, would you like to answer Lincoln's? Uh, let, let me give somebody else another turn. Uh, the, you quickly just said about the air and water quality that they're doing the testing. No, no, Why no, is it the EPA no, doing it? No, 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 no. You, again, EPA does air and water quality testing. NOAA does water quality testing. They also do testing, and we're asking them to make public their the samples of that testing. It's, EPA, so EPA rechecks the test. Uh, well, and does their own. Yeah, and does their, they do their own testing, yes. They, they, it's, it's all up on a website if you want to look at water, air and water quality sampling. Uh, Secretary Napolitano is still the person, I guess, it's overall in charge. Is there any concern? No, the National Incident Commander has, has been for several weeks, Thad Allen, and again, as I said, oh, let me, because okay. uh, I, I I, I'm not, apparently not being clear. Uh, Thad Allen has postponed his retirement from the Coast Guard mm -hmm. to continue on as the National Incident Commander. Uh, a new Commandant of the Coast Guard will be put in. Uh, they'll be able to focus on their job while Admiral Allen focuses on uh, as the overall National Incident Commander uh, as is required by law. Are you guys confident that Secretary Napolitano is not being taken too much away considering the, you know, 
the again, other part of her job again, at Homeland Security. Coast Guard is part of DHS, so there's some equity there. Again, the National Incident Commander is Thad Allen, okay? Secretary Napolitano uh, certainly has equities in this based on the fact that DHS is there. Secretary Salazar has equities because of DUI and MMS. Uh, the Department of Commerce is where NOAA sits. They have equities in this. The Environmental Protection Agency oh, has they, equities. Are you at all, is there any concern here that she's being taken away on, Based the, on, what? on the, just how much time she has to spend here? She had to testify on the Hill, and considering the time square, the, that she's being taken away from any of her duties having to do with worrying about I have not heard anybody term. say that. Okay. Other question on, on DNI. Is there any thought being considered of getting the position itself restructured, going back to Congress and saying, Here's what we've learned. Maybe, maybe it ought to be structured like I, I this. I have not. Uh, I have not heard discussions today uh, about greater intelligence reform you guys at this still point. Confident that this structure is well, the right look, structure. I, I think that I think that the government continues to work through the challenges that uh, that the law uh, and the position have always presented to government, uh, and in the coordination of many different. Uh, agencies and departments and the intelligence functions that they uh, represent. As I said earlier, this is a this is an extremely difficult job for any person to do, and we think uh, that Admiral Blair did a great job. You have that intelligence advisory board, Chuck Hagel and some others serving. President's the PM, yeah, the President's yeah. intelligence advisory. Board. Are they being asked to look at the structure of this, and will they make? Could they be making recommendations about how DNI should be structured? They have been, and they uh, they have been asked, and they did. And are, I, I, it's a, a it's a. Is there anything you have to go to Congress with? Uh, I read the report again last night, and I don't remember that that was the case. Robert, can I ask a question? Let, let me get around here. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Robert. Two questions. One, as far as uh, uh, this immigration problem is concerned, how seriously you think President thinking this is a really time has come to do something. This is a serious problem, as also as far as supply and demand. So as far as? Supply and, supply and demand. Well, uh, well, I think you've heard the President on a number of occasions, certainly this week with President Calderon here, uh, reiterate his commitment to uh, comprehensive immigration reform, understanding that uh, this is not something that he can implement alone. This is not something that can be implemented by simply one party, uh, and that those that have traditionally uh, supported immigration reform on both sides are going to have to do that again. Uh, we're not going to be able to create a solution uh, without the bipartisan help uh, of uh, members of the House and, and the Senate that have worked on this before. And second, second, and second let, let me come around. I, second, I, I, as far as the freedom of the press is concerned, more than half of the countries are not free as far as freedom of the press is concerned, and other the president signed the Freedom of the Press Act. But do you think President is thinking of signing a Freedom of Press Act week to celebrate because press is really a bridge between governments and the people? Well, and what do you think as a press? Well, well, I would simply say that uh, I think this was a fitting week to sign a bill that adds freedom of the press to uh, uh, the State Department's uh, study of human rights uh, and uh, the role that it plays uh, in a free society. Uh, what options does the U.S. realistically have to punish North Korea, and uh, what response has the U.S. gotten from China? Well, I, uh, uh, there are several. Uh, obviously, you know that the secretaries in the region. Uh, I, I don't have anything to add to what I said yesterday uh, about we continue to consult with the South Koreans. Uh, I know they had uh, uh, they had some emergency meetings last night uh, and yesterday, based on uh, the uh, report that came back. Um, uh, providing responsibility for what happened uh, to the North Koreans. And, and will the administration push to have the Consumer Protection Agency stand alone, as Barney Frank wants? Well, look, uh, I, I, I think uh, what uh, the president met with Senators Senator Dodd and and, uh, and Congressman Frank today uh, to. Uh, first, I think to congratulate them for uh, for their effort. Uh, we have, I think, many people might have believed um, at the beginning of the year and certainly into February that getting financial reform done this year wasn't possible, uh, and that 
certainly having a strong consumer protection uh, portion of this, having the Volcker rule, limiting the size and scope of the activities that banks can be involved in, and regulating derivatives uh, was not something that, that we'd be lucky to get one of those, and we're likely to get none of those in a final piece of legislation that passed the Senate. Throughout this process, the legislation has gotten stronger. In terms of, uh, of, of the consumers, uh, the bill is very strong in the Senate. Uh, they're going to go through each of these provisions together, the conference committee will, uh, in making some of those decisions. We think it is important that there be uh, less the address and more the independence of, uh, of the consumer agency uh, in having a, its own budget and its own leadership. Uh, as I said yesterday, that many, many families in this country, um, their, their interaction with our financial system is through the many things that, uh, that this area would, would regulate, uh, whether that's getting a loan for a car, getting a loan for a house, getting a credit card. It's the very type of protections that the American people need the most. They talk about timing and strategy. Well, uh, broadly on timing, uh, I think uh, both members uh, and the president believe uh, we can get something done by the 4th of July. Thank you. On uh, Dennis Blair, uh, did, were you suggesting to us that he solved the problems that necessarily come with that position because of the no, ambiguity no, I, of the I, law, or will the next DNI still face those ambiguities think, and statutory limitations? I think many DNIs beyond whoever is next will deal with uh, some of the vagueness and many of the complexities. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think anybody here, and I don't. I certainly don't think. Recalling the president's remarks uh, after the attempted uh, bombing on Christmas Day, um, that we don't have improvements that we continually have to make in our intelligence system. Does the president believe this is a naturally unwieldy process, having a strong CIA director and a DNI and a insert inside White House counterterrorism advisor that inevitably there well, will be turf battles, inevitably there will be either no, no. Well, disputes understand. or disagreements I, about I who has authority or... I think it's right. important to understand, no, 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 I think it's important to understand that the principal intelligence advisor for the President of the United States is the Director of National Intelligence. The Director of National Intelligence and their department produce each day the President's daily briefing. The President begins each of those days uh, both with that briefing and either with the Director of National Intelligence or employees of the Director of the National Intelligence in order to go through uh, through the President's daily briefing. So there's, there is, uh, there's no ambiguity as to who uh, the principal intelligence advisor to the President of the United States is. Did the President ask uh, Leon Panetta to consider becoming DNI? Uh, I'm not going to get into personnel uh, replacements. Yesterday, the House Armed Services Committee voted 59 to nothing to move forward the uh, Defense Authorization Bill. It contains language that denies all funding to build or convert any facility in the United States for Guantanamo Bay detainees. How far does this set the President's goal back of uh, closing Guantanamo Bay? I think that, the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the committee uh, asked for uh, uh, a report on um, uh, and some ideas on uh, exactly how a facility might be structured. Uh, that report and details will be going up to Congress. I, I will say, uh, I can check on a timetable. Uh, I will say that uh, you know, we, have, we have always maintained that uh, we need uh, increased uh, prison facility. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, I think the law prevents the Department of Defense from, uh, but not the Department of Justice from purchasing such facility. Okay. And on the Gulf oil spill, I want to ask it this way. Is there anything that, in the process of dealing with this, you have found in the 1990 law that limits the federal government's authority in ways you wish it did not? Not, that, anything I'm, not that I'm aware of, except uh, what we've asked. Uh, we, obviously, we've set up, sent up, uh, uh, we set up structures that change liability, and liability uh, right. in order to ensure that uh, a disaster of, of this magnitude uh, is not does not the, the economic damages um, are that that are going to be that are going to that our citizens are going to suffer through are adequately compensated uh, even if they're beyond the 75 
uh, million dollar liability threshold that the law currently has. But the law itself has not created limitations that you wish did not exist. I, I will look through the, the exact legislation that was set up and see if there's anything uh, as a part that's in there. Peter. Well, we've been talking a lot about the uh, structure of the DNI job. I guess what I'm confused about is, is the problem here then the DNI job or the person who filled the DNI job? Well, I'll just say this. The, I think the job is very challenging. Uh, I think Director Blair uh, took on a number of um, a number of those challenges that the law uh, and the job presented. Uh, those aren't always easy to take on. Uh, I think Director Blair also um, dramatically focused uh, our government on counterterrorism and radicalization, uh, and uh, rightly increased our focus uh, on Afghanistan and Southeast Asia in pursuing uh, terrorists that seek to do our country harm. The President believes that uh, at this point uh, a transition uh, in who that person is uh, is the best for the country. Well, you just said that we think Admiral Blair did a great job. Why then is the time for a transition? Well, because uh, I think we have uh, some of the challenges that continue that we have to continue to take on, uh, the president simply believes it's time to make a change. Well, Sorry. Just, well, yeah. I mean, give us any elaboration on why? I mean, that you just gone through all these ideas about what Admiral Blair, Blair did that you think were, were good, mm -hmm. but there's time for a change. I mean, well, well again, uh, the, the president uh, simply believes that uh, the uh, that where we are and and what we have to do moving forward. Uh, that it's time to uh, to make a change there. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you president lost confidence in him? Yeah, that was my question. Are you disputing all the various people who have said it? he's lost confidence? Uh, again, the president uh, the president decided to make a change. I'll let that speak for itself. How often did Blair, did uh, Director Blair actually come and do the uh, presidential daily brief? I, I, I don't have that number in front of me. I, I, I can, uh, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I can see if there's a way. Sorry, to... Robert, can I just come back on one yeah. other thing? There, a number of people have said this is a sign that the administration's intelligence apparatus is in disarray. Would you like to dispute that? Uh, who said that? Uh, Op-ed pieces. I mean, I, I haven't, got, I don't have a list, sorry. Uh, I, You're I, telling me you don't have a list. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, you know, he would, except his iPad buddy, you can see, is conspicuously absent. my research. Uh, you really think that nobody said <laughs> Well, I, I was just asking to, to take on rather than something broader than maybe the, a particular so criticism. That's great. No. <laughs> I can report that. Good. Report that uh, I changed the premise of your question based on. No, no, I. I, I, I there, there are uh, a series of laws and structures in this country. Uh, that provide for uh, a very robust intelligence effort uh, by the federal government. I don't think that uh, uh, I don't think that in any way uh, uh, we lack any sort of capacity. Uh, I think if you look at uh, look, there's no question that we're facing uh, different challenges based on, in many ways, uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, overseas. Without getting more specific. Um, uh, and I think if you look at what is uh, what the intelligence community has been able to do in tracking uh, Zazi, uh, in uh, identifying and tracking uh, Headley in Chicago, uh, there's a whole host of things that the intelligence community does uh, each and every day uh, that aren't discussed in the newspapers uh, that the American people can have great confidence in. And Congressman Peter King's assertion that Blair's made a scapegoat for other failures here? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the basis for that is, given the fact that uh, I think the President spoke pretty clearly uh, and took direct responsibility for uh, the failures in coordination uh, and in information sharing that we saw uh, around the Christmas Day, attempted Christmas Day bombing. Uh, I think the notion that uh, uh, that anybody has has shirked that responsibility, uh, they clearly haven't been paying attention uh, to what the president has said, and quite frankly, what each member of the intelligence committee uh, has had to say as a result of what happened on Christmas Day. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's a follow up on the counter on question. Um, it's been nearly a month since um, SB 1070 was passed, and I'm just wondering how much longer does the DOJ need uh, from President Obama's orders to? 
decide on whether or not they'll file a lawsuit based on the constitutionality of the law. Yeah. Um, well, how, long, how much longer will I, I, President I, I, Calderon I, I, will need to hear from President Obama about well, the lawsuit? I, I, I think that question is better directed to the Department of Justice, which is working on that report. Okay. Yes, uh, follow up. Who, who runs the Joint Command Center down in the Gulf? Is that a federal government? Yeah, or the, is joint, the Joint Information the, Center and the uh, uh, and the Command Center. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, it's a. It's no. They they have uh, they have a center, I believe, in uh, in Houston. Yeah. Yes, oh, we, I, I got it. I get beat up because I I only take. The first two rows. Yep. Hey, the House Armed Services Committee last night voted to ban funding for modification and construction of detention centers on U.S. soil. Yeah, I think I did that a little while ago. Did right. you? While, yeah. I, while I was reading about it here. Uh, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, could you, but could you just say, is this is, should the state be proceeding with its plan still to, you know, to do the again? The I, purchase? I think when the transcript was out, I think Major asked that question. And answered. Margaret. Thank you. Um, on the BP oil spill. <laughs> Is the federal government exerting as much control as legally possible yes. in your oversight? Yes. And, uh, or I'll just finish my question for the sake of finishing. Okay. Um, I, I, are there any? I can say yes to the first part. Are there any powers that the federal government has held off on using, either None because you feel that it would be disruptive or send the wrong message about government interference in private business? Meaning what? Are there, is there any sort of level of control or oversight that you could assume that no. you have not yet assumed? No, I mean, I th again, the purpose of your question is somehow the federal government is not doing everything that is humanly possible it's to not, stop flu. Okay, but I'm not trying to premise that in a political fashion. I'm asking no, no, you a technical I, I, I'm not question. reading it in a political fashion. I'm, 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 again, I don't, I'm not trying to be flip here, but that's you, the, the inherent in your question was that, we're, that somehow uh, you're asking whether or not we you, we think we're doing we're, there's something we could be doing that we're not. That you're not doing for a good reason. I mean, is what I'm asking. So the government doesn't come at something with you know everything in the playbook all the time unless you think it's the right thing to do. I'm ask, I'm asking because I don't know the answer. Are there powers that theoretically you have that you've chosen not to exercise? Theoretical yet? powers? Are, are there powers <laughs> that you have good. chosen not to exercise yet because you think it would be unwise, but that you have in your back pocket as something additional you could throw no, at the cleanup? No, again. We're doing everything humanly and technologically possible. Uh, obviously, we follow the law. I think that's inherent in, uh, or at least if it's not, I'd like to make it uh, overt. Uh, obviously, we're following the law. Yes. Thank you, Robert. Uh, as you requested, I'm following up on my question Monday about no-bid contracts. I only read the preliminary reports then. Uh, I, I, I have not held up my end of the bargain. Uh, come on Monday and I will hold up my end of the bargain. Right. And I beg your pardon that I only had the partial story then. So just, should I ask you on Monday? Yeah, let's do this on Monday. <laughs> Thank April. you for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, 1965 Voting Rights Act was put in place to give blacks first class citizenship. And does Rand Paul's comments in the Civil Rights Act give pause to the wave of racial discourse currently taking place? And what could eventually be challenged or challenged to it? I, I, give me the second part, the wave of... Racial discourse, conversation about race right now that's going on, especially after his comments. I mean, ever since really this president has come uh, on the national stage with his efforts of running for office and then becoming the first black president. I mean, what do you think about and what's being said about Rand Paul's comments around here? Uh, well, as I said yesterday, I, you know, this was the the... Laws passed in the uh, in 1964 and in 1965 are um, uh, while we continue to improve uh, race relations in this country, I, th they are they are debates that have been uh, rightly and correctly settled uh, many decades ago. I think the notion that somehow in 2010 we're debating whether or not. Uh, all of our citizens ought to enjoy equal opportunity, uh, something that I think many believed was rightly settled in 1964, 1965, and 1968, uh, has, as I said yesterday, no place in, uh, or shouldn't have any place in, uh, our debate right now. I think we've, uh, those were very difficult times, and we, uh, we dealt with them, and we, we settled many of those issues in landmark legislation that, uh, 
that continues to serve this country and all of its people well. Do you think we're having this conversation because of the first black president who some in this White House have said race and politics will always follow him? Do you think we're hearing no, more I think, of we're having, I think we're having the current conversation because in 2010 you had somebody who uh, seemed to, uh, not seemed to, called into question uh, whether or not uh, it was appropriate for uh, a private company uh, through a lunch counter to discriminate against uh, a group of citizens in this country. Again, in 1964 and in 1965 and in the preceding years, we've, we've, uh, we've settled those issues. I think that's why we're having the current conversation. And back on BP really fast. Um, back on the current questions, basically, um, are all federal options on the table? Um, going back to that question. Such as? Are you going to take more of an aggressive role in oversight? I mean, like yesterday Again, on CNN. There's nothing, that, there's nothing that we think can and should be done that isn't being done. Nothing. Okay, well, okay. Absolutely nothing. Well, will there be any efforts to try to change that? Because, I mean, many people have been talking about this, uh, uh, this comment from the EPA administrator yesterday on CNN. She's, she was asked by, I guess, Wolf that... Um, if there is, what's the relationship with BP and the federal government? <coughs> she said trust but verify. And so many people are saying if you got to verify, there's no trust. So with that, again, well, will I think you try a to moniker change? that follows our relationship with countries around the world, not just with companies that do business in the Gulf. Uh, I'm not going to get into the explanation of, of historical trust but verify. But again, we have, um, uh, BP has, uh, the obligation and responsibility uh, to plug the hole in the floor of the ocean and to respond to the oil that is leaked out uh, with our oversight, uh, the over strong oversight that and strong response that we'll continue to exercise. Yes, sir. Robert, thank you. On coming back to uh, to, to BP, not to be presumptuous about some of the other we questions, leave. <laughs> but there's sort of a. Uh, BP's response uh, from the get-go, uh, one of the first things they did was they tried to buy people off with five grand if they wouldn't pursue future liability. Yeah, I think you know, they the, provide I think information. The Attorney General of Alabama, and, uh, and as well as, uh, as, well as uh, we communicated through this administration that uh, trying to hire people to, uh, trying to hire fishermen that couldn't fish anymore because NOAA had closed part of it asking them to help uh, and paying them to lay boom, but then prohibiting them from, as fishermen, ever filing uh, economic claims was, uh, was, not, uh, was not the right thing to do. But I haven't gotten to the question yet. I'm saying that's the first thing they did. And then, in general, there's a sense <coughs> that they provide information with an eyedropper. And then the video on Which is why we've asked them to be uh, more transparent about, about air and water quality samples. Uh, and about a video footage of what's happening 5,000 feet beneath the no, sea. No, no, the video from on CBS the other night of, uh, of Coast Guard officials on that ship with what were described as BP contractors threatening to arrest journalists <coughs> for merely taking pictures. All of this put together gives, uh, I, gives I, I, you about 60 minutes. No, I'm talking about it was on, yeah, it was on uh, Chipwood. I was on. Uh, I, so all I, of I, I, I don't. I, I did not see that. Uh, they threatened particular. to arrest. They threatened to arrest a CBS crew for taking okay. pictures. And they for said daring to take pictures. BP had told them that they couldn't work. Anymore. So all of this. Paints Who was threatening to arrest? There were two agents on the boat too. Yeah. Was I, 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 you know, Why look. is the Coast Guard being co-opted with BP officials and threatening the arrest of journalists for trying to take I, pictures? I, I'd have to look at the story. I, 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 other than I'd have to look at what. Uh, 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 what CBS reported. I just haven't seen that story. Bill. Thank you, Robert. Uh, in the spirit of Peter Baker and maybe more homework uh, for the weekend, I wanted to go back. I asked you about the landmines treaty, the administration's position. Uh, I, I will get something on that. 68 senators have asked the president to in sign. A letter, right. All right. Yep. Monday? Uh, or later today. All right. Ooh, I don't want to homework over the weekend. Go ahead, Glenn. <laughs> oh, uh, Glenn. Me. Glenn, I'll go to you, Glenn. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you guys were very prescriptive uh, in the in the latter days of the 
the financial regulatory reform negotiations in the Senate. You weighed in on specific amendments. Do you intend to play that kind of interventionist role during the conference committee? And where do you stand specifically on these various competing uh, derivatives proposals? Well, look, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think that that level of detail was gotten into today uh, with the president and the two chairs. Uh, they talked more broadly uh, about the strength of the bills. Uh, and I'm sure that the uh, – uh, I'm sure that as we go through uh, – the as Congress goes through uh, to look at and to compare provisions, uh, we will have an opportunity to weigh in, uh, and uh, I'm not going to get ahead of that process. Some individuals would say that the derivatives proposals in the Senate bill would, would trim 20 percent off of bank profits. Do you buy that number, and do you think that that's a genuine concern? Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know what the basis is for, for that number. Uh, again, we the, the proposal that the President put forward um, in the white paper last year uh, called for uh, pulling the type of activities uh, that we're talking about out of the dark uh, and into the light, putting them on exchanges and regulating those exchanges. Uh, uh, the Volcker rule, which, uh, which met initial resistance and may have continued resistance on Wall Street, the President believed was enormously important as it related to the size of banks and the scope of what, uh, what activities they can take part in. Um, so uh, I think as they get through the process of appointing uh, who's going to deal with these issues, uh, we'll have a chance to go through and compare those provisions. Sam? Uh, one more on Admiral Blair. You said the President decided it was time to make a change. Can you give us a sense of when he began to think that? I mean, was it Christmas Day or was it more recently? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into the timing of that. Robert Whitey interviewed candidate Director Blair, uh, and that gave his resignation. To have uh, uh, people in ready to, if he decided to make a change. Ken? Robert, Senator does, uh, says he's clearly sticking with uh, A.G. Blumenthal uh, as the, uh, you know, to run for the uh, uh, seat that he's vacating at the end of the year. Where, where does the White House stand on? Uh, I have not heard anything that would. Uh, from the political shop that would lead me to believe uh, uh, anything other than uh, our continued support as well. You think that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, as a candidate, President uh, Obama said that he would like to see fuel economy standards um, doubled um, to 50 miles per gallon by 2027. Mm -hmm. um, is the president committed to that goal? Uh, let me check and see where what the progress we've made uh, and where we are on uh, uh, on that goal um, as it relates to the improvements that have been made. Uh, with cars and light trucks and with the additional announcements today uh, of, uh, of larger trucks and work vehicles. Uh, let me talk with, uh, with, uh, with Carol Brown and others to see sort of uh, where we are on, on, uh, on that goal. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Hey, Robert, uh, Rat, uh, Mal, Bull, Bull, have you got oh, anything yeah. from the Park Service board? <laughs> yeah. hey, do, you, do you have some control mechanisms can you, can you, in place? Can you, can you, can you, can you tell I, uh, us what it is? Can't you tell that Red Tail off to get to know? Know. I will say it? this. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's in charge of Armin. Uh, I would say um, we were – Reggie and I were discussing this uh, based on the picture that I don't, the president didn't see this uh, uh, yesterday. So I, we were, I was telling him about it today. And uh, um, Reggie says, field mouse. No, 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 no. Way, too, way too big. Yeah, I, said, I said, based on the size of the photograph, comparing it to the diameter of. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah you know about field mice? My sense is that Reggie has lived in some houses with field mouses, <laughs> field mice. But I would say, um, again, judging the, judging the size of um, the animal, based on the diameter of the seal. I got to tell you, that's a rat. Uh, <laughs> I think, come on, that's a, a, where I'm from, that's a rat. We're and uh, sure. you should bowl treat it as such. What's the president's we level of concern yeah, about rats? Do you think it's a bowl? bowl? We've, 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 we've been, been online all day. We're What's a bowl? Yeah. I don't know, but they keep tweeting like, it. A bowl is a rodent about that size. What's the level? But it's not a bowl, it's a bowl. Ask the high rat. May the park service give us an answer? If we didn't have so many people in the Gulf working on this, we could. Are you going to use the humane trust? I would say, what's that? President wants out about it. <laughs>
Uh, no <laughs> that he did not get into. Uh, look, I, my guess is that it lives out there somewhere in the Rose Garden, and he's okay with that. Uh, quite comfortably, uh, be a pretty good Rose Garden uh, to live in. I, I still think it's definitely not a mouse. I've seen a mouse, and they're, they're not nearly that big, but I'm now going to go Google Vol and see uh, uh, if John Holdren is around. Thanks, guys.